So let's have a little bit of think about work-life balance. So why is it important and why is it something that we talk about a lot? Well, I think we probably all know what happens when work-life balance is not present in our lives. When we know that we're out of tune with work-life balance, we know that we're more prone to stress. And all of us know what those impacts of stress are on our physical and emotional well-being. So I'm sure we can all think back to a time when that balance felt very, very difficult, where it didn't feel like you had enough time or energy for the things you wanted in your life, where maybe work and your career took over everything that was going on. And it was very difficult to leave work at work and be present for those people that you want to in your work and your life at home. It's a really important topic because we all know that if that cycle continues, then there's a cycle of burnout and all of those stages of burnout that come with it. Today, we're going to chat a little bit about work-life balance. What we're going to think about is what work-life balance looks like for you and how you might be able to bring more of that into your own life as well. So I'm really excited to think about this for you and to help you Think about how you can mindfully move forward in your career. So our theme is all about how to create that harmony in your life and how to use more mindful approaches to achieve a work-life balance. So I know this is a goal that so many of you have shared is one of your goals with me and that you would like to get a better work-life balance. You'd like a better workload balance. You might like a work-life balance that works for you one that you can feel like you have that life at work and also at home so you can do all of the things you want in your life without having to compromise and you have that energy and the time for everything. I'm going to share with you some thoughts on how to start thinking about your own work-life balance, how to shift a little bit that idea of work-life balance and some of the actions that you might be able to use to bring more balance into your world. So if we are not able to identify where we are on this spectrum of balance, then it's really difficult to take any action to rectify it. So when you're thinking about this sense of work-life balance, one of the things I would invite you to do is to really rephrase it because I like to see it in more of a holistic approach to your health and well-being rather than just thinking about work and life, which can often feel quite dichotomous. It's really quite black and white. If we think about well-being, what we know about well-being is there's so many aspects that allow us to feel fulfilled and enhance our well-being. There's our spiritual aspect, there's our emotional aspect, there's our physical aspect, there are those relationships around us, there is our financial well-being, there is our environmental well-being, all these different aspects fit together. It's not just about work and life, not everything else just gets bundled into life. So I would invite you to think about it more holistically and think about when you're starting to identify where you are right now is to start identifying where you are in your whole sense of well-being so that you can identify where your energy is going. And this is a tool that I often use with my clients is where is your energy going right now and where would you like your energy to be going? Are there aspects of your life that you're not paying attention to that you feel you would like to give more energy to? Are there other aspects that are taking more energy? Where can you create that balance? Because it's really about having that holistic sense rather than just that black and white approach. And I'd really like to talk about resilience here because the word resilience can be quite emotive. And often people get quite stressed about the idea of thinking about resilience in healthcare because there is so much that we can't change around us. But for me, when I think about resilience and what I would love to share with you is that Resilience for me is about acknowledging that the world around us is not balanced, that there are lots of things we cannot change alone. And many things that need changing, and I acknowledge there's a lot of things that need changing within healthcare systems, they need greater system changes to make any impact on our lives. For me, that's been the passion of my career in public health is to really make those upstream changes. So those can not be done individually alone. We know that. And by acknowledging that, what we're acknowledging is that the world is unbalanced. The world does have many things that need rectifying. For me, resilience is about acknowledging that you are finding that balance for yourself in an unbalanced world. It's about having those skills and tools to really bring that balance in when the world is going out of kilter around you. So for a moment, just acknowledge what those things are that you can't change alone. What are those bigger picture things that you need others to change for or with you? And then think about what are those things that you can change for yourself, which goes back to that wellness. What are those things in your wellness, your holistic wellness that you can actually start enacting and changing for yourself? 
acknowledging that you might need to put some energy into those bigger picture things too but really creating that separation allows us to think about resilience in a different way so being resilient is really about finding that balance for yourself when everything else is not balanced and acknowledging that the world is not balanced and this is something that we are going to experience again and again as the world is shifting and changing so I'd love to invite you to start thinking about what balance actually means to you because if you want a better work-life balance it's really helpful to get clear on what balance looks like so what is that balance what are those things that are really important to you what are your priorities in life and where are you right now so doing a simple exercise where you're mapping out all these different elements of your holistic wellness can be really helpful to think about what are the things that you feel you are missing out on and that you'd like to bring more of into your life what are those things that allow you to find that inner sense of peace and calm and harmony What are those things where you maybe feel like you're spending a lot of energy and you're getting a real comeback from? What are those things that you're really invested in that are going well? So highlight the positive and the negative when you're thinking about balance. Getting really clear on what balance looks like for you can really help you to prioritize what you need at that point in time. And so this prioritization practice is something that can be really helpful to do in a checking in practice, like regularly checking in on where you are with balance. So this might be that you're actually doing this on a daily basis, on a weekly basis, on a yearly basis. But actually balance is not really this this ideal achievement in the long term. It's really about getting it every day. So get into that habit of checking in. Where are you with your balance right now? And get into your habit of thinking about it in an energetic term. Where are your energy? Where's your energy going? Where are you spending energy? Are your expenditures of energy aligned with your priorities? If not, what's not matching very well? Use that quality of mindfulness to really think about where you want to focus your priorities. And by doing that, what you can do is to start to use that energy to bring yourself into the present. So you're really shifting. So for example, if your relationships is an area that you want to spend more energy on, Maybe you want to connect more with friends and that's a priority in your life because you know it's going to bring you more happiness, more sense of connection, then you're going to need to put more energy there. So using that quality of mindfulness to say, this is a priority for me. I'm going to make time for this in my day. Now that can feel overwhelming because you're going to say like, how can I do that? There is no time in the day. But by connecting to what's going on around you and by connecting to where you are with your energy, what you can also do is start to identify those activities that you might be spending energy on that maybe no longer bring you joy in your life or add anything to your life. And so you can start to identify those things that you want to let go of. And so this is really about creating that balance, as hopefully you can see now. We're starting to think about one priority against another, a priority that maybe was really high on your list 10 years ago, but no longer is. Some of those things that you've let slip a little bit that you'd love to bring back in. Thinking about where you are, identifying what that balance means to you, where you are right now and where you'd like to get to with it so that you've got a goal, so you've got somewhere to head to. And one thing I'd really love to share and just to emphasize, which is so, so simple when you say it, but your balance is totally unique. Your balance is going to look very, very different to someone else's. And the reason for that is we all have different priorities and our priorities have shifted over time. When you acknowledge that, that your priorities are, your balance is going to be unique. Your balance is not going to look like your colleagues. It's not going to look like your friends. And it won't look the same either every day. So this idea of checking in as to what you need and what your priorities are is going to really help you to identify what that balance looks like for you. And with that, it's really helpful, I think, to think about how those priorities shift over time. So be really fluid if you can about what balance means, because it's going to change all the time. It's going to change depending on what your life circumstances are. When you meet people, you go into relationships, you have families, all of these points in time are going to shift your priorities. They're going to shift what you need to do and where you want to spend your energy. So bringing in a practice where you can really check in as to what's going on is really, really helpful because as things shift, you may need to shift what you're doing and where your energy is going. Also, a really lovely practice to celebrate celebrate what you have changed and I've just been on a call today with one of my clients where we've reviewed what's happened in the last three months and to see that shift and to see where those different aspects of holistic wellness have been improved is really fantastic so it's also really important about giving yourself that positivity, using that positive mindset to inspire you, to motivate you to continue and to carry on. Use that time of reflection to make small or big adjustments. There might be things that you can give yourself a little bit of reflection and feedback for. Within all of this, one thing that I think is really, really key to finding balance is connection. So do you have time for connection within what you're perceiving as your balance? And I see connection as connection to yourself, connection to the world around you and connection to other people. 
Because feeling connected is a fundamental human need. We all need to feel connected and cared about. And when we're able to feel like that, what we can do is expend more energy to other people and to ourselves. So think about what those activities are that bring you more connection into your life. Is it by connecting with friends? Is it by spending time with family? Is it by connecting with colleagues? Are there things that you do that are volunteering? Are there initiatives that you'd love to contribute to? How can you bring more of that connection into your world when you're looking at your balance and really trying to carve out what that ideal harmonious balance is? So hopefully this gives you a sense of how to approach what's going on. So really getting clear on why it's important to you. What are those real motivators that are important for you to change your work-life balance as it is? Really thinking about it in that sense of holistic health and well-being, all those different aspects that contribute to your overall well-being. And thinking about creating that balance for yourself on a regular basis, on every day if you possibly can, so that every day you're feeling balanced despite what's going on around you. Getting really clear on what your priorities are so that you can keep checking in and seeing if your energy is matching your priorities and recognizing that it's going to shift and change over time. But really focusing on whether you have that sense of connection within your world of balance. So once you've got really clear on all of that, it's so important to create goals because goals are really that point of compass that navigation forward start to visualize what your goals are and sometimes the idea of creating better balance can feel really overwhelming and daunting especially if it feels like you can't remember the last time you've had really great balance in your life but visualization can be really helpful because what it does is it gives us that confidence that it's possible so use that power of visualization to support you whatever your goals are whether they are small goals just to change one little thing tomorrow or whether they are large goals to change things for the next six months, whether they're short term or long term. Obviously, make that goal really realistic and start to think about something that's important. So for you, it could be that you want to spend more time with your children, but you want to spend that time being quality time. Thinking really in detail about all those actual steps you might need to make that happen. So you might need to schedule some time in, you might need to be able to turn off your phone to create a really nice activity to share together, whatever it is that you need. Think about all of those things and break it down into those simplest and smallest tasks. And once you've done that, start to visualize all of those tasks and yourself doing it. Then when you're actually doing it, see if you're able to use that visualization to help you create those steps and create that balance. And remember to bring in some self-compassion. If you don't do all of the action steps, it's not a disaster. The more you start to succeed with those small actions, the more confident you will feel about making that time and space for your priorities, for the people who are important in your life, for those aspects of your wellness that are really going to help you get balanced. 